Hello, today we'll be looking at this FPV watch from Ishing. But just before we get into that, a quick reminder as always to please like or dislike this video if you don't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find it, click on the little bell icon. It'll tell you when I'm uploading videos. Now, if you've been uh, looking at my channel for a while, you would have maybe seen me using this one or even seen the review from it. This is the Jiteng watch, and it was uh, a sort of basic FPV watch. It has this little antenna that pulls out um, and it had the, the basic channels, but it didn't have race band, so it was quite an early one. But I thought it was quite a neat little thing. I used to use it on the bench just when I was checking stuff out. Um, I occasionally used to use it on the field, again, just so I didn't have to put my goggles on and stuff. Quite a, a nifty little thing. So what's this one doing, and, and why is it nicer or better? What we've got here, and I'll take it out of the package and show you what we have. First, a bit of Velcro, then the watch itself. Do have the option of blue or white, and I think white is particularly unattractive I have to say I would I would go with the blue but uh, yeah there it is it's almost the same sort of thing I dare say it would be the same sort of screen but it's got a couple of additions first thing is it does race band and it does a, a low band as well secondly it's got three buttons which will do more so where this starts getting interesting is we've got this slot here which is for a micro SD card which means it's got a DVR built in so I'm guessing, without looking at the instructions, one of those buttons is like record or stop record and review stuff. The other interesting thing is, because this has got, you know, not an amazing antenna, it's got, again, the same as the last one, this little fold out thing. So what you do is that goes there and then that goes up like that. So not, not the most amazing antenna, but using the USB lead here, which charges it because it's got its internal battery. You can also hook this up to an AV out of your goggles. So treat this directly as like an external DVR, which just, just happens to have a screen, which I think is quite nifty. So the other things you've got in the box to support that is this USB charge cable and this USB to phono jack, which would go and connect to your goggles. Um, lastly in here is the instructions, which I haven't looked at yet, but it looks like this, and it's got a whole useful key function thing. And it looks like it's got a bunch of short press, long presses to do different functions. So you've got a whole thing about how to record, how to playback, how to change channel, frequency, etc., etc. Looks pretty interesting. We should check it out. Let's do that. Let's go into how this works. As I mentioned before, you've got the USB connector, the SD card. This is the antenna. It goes out like that and then upwards and you've got three buttons here and you can't quite see but this says channel that's power that's RF so let's turn on I'll show you what we get so it's a little hard to read on the top there but you've got RF the band the channel it's going away uh, the megahertz uh, you've got the little symbol to show the SD card up in that corner. First you've got the RF button. This will actually cycle through your bands. You should hopefully, just up here, you should see that the band's changing. Down the bottom is the channel button. When you do this, you'll see different channels. Um, and if you hold in the RF button at the top, it'll do a band scan going around looking for stuff. Uh, it's not going to find anything, but I will turn stuff on in a second just to show you. So we are currently on F4. I've just plugged this guy in, so let's do that scan again. And I think it should be on A1, but it just depends where it finds it really. And it's found it on B something, I think that was. B8. It's interesting how different it is. Let's actually put it onto A1. There, yeah, same sort of thing. But anyway, that's the nice pitch you get, which is jolly good. You've then got the option of using this middle button. Now it says to short button to record, short button to stop, but in actual fact, what happens when you do it the first press, it just brings up the little OSD. It's only when the OSD is on there, it does it. So if you press it, press it again, you'll see that goes red and that means it's starting recording and we've got some recording there and I can move my little quad around and we can see some other stuff happening and again we have to press it while it's on screen for that to stop 
Okay, that's all good. I'm going to just turn this off a sec. So what we can then do is have a look at our playback options. If we hold this bottom button down, we go into the settings menu and we've got lots of brightness, contrast, saturation, uh, hue, the timeout. I might just increase that a touch. This is how long the um, OSD stays on screen. If I say 10 seconds, that's better. We've also got SD format, which I recommend doing. When I first put my SD card in, it just said it was full and it didn't seem to recognize it at all. Uh, but after I formatted it in here, it was fine. So playback, if we hit the enter, this one moment is very reminiscent of the um, fat shot thing. And we can go sort of up and down and we've got different clips there. Um, and then what we do again, you may have to do a little, oh no, that was actually going. We've got our clip going there, and if we hold that down, or just short press there, we can do times two, and we can go backwards here, times four, times eight. Uh, middle button to play again, and then go forwards, times four. Uh, and then we have to press this button long again to get out of the settings menu. Essentially, that's it. But it's quite nice, because obviously you can just go in to replay very easily, uh, which is great for when you're on the field. So if I go to this one, and I only did this when I was just in there. So if you're looking for a crash thing, you, it's very easy to stay, pause there. So we rewind a bit. And then press play again, and then we want to pause it there for do something. Really nice, uh, easy settings there. That is a sense, is everything where we can record uh, from the air. And the, the other thing that I mentioned is it can do via goggles. So if we plug this guy in to here, so that's plugged in there, you will see it says AV in just at this bit. So it knows it's gonna get something through the goggles. At the moment, there's nothing going on. What I'm gonna do is attach this bit of cable from my fat sharks. You see we've got nothing, but if I do that, you can see that it's basically picking up my oops, my rapid fire. Um, and ditto if I had anything uh, coming through on the rapid fire. And it's got the quad there. Yeah. It's on A1. But yeah, the important thing when doing this is to make sure it actually says AV in just there. As I've managed to get this plugged in, but somehow record from the inbuilt receiver. Uh, I'll show you what happened there in a second. And of course, when you've got AV in, you can still record directly to it. So you can, as I said, use this as an external DVR that way. Stopped recording there. It did come with that little Velcro pad and what you can do fairly easily is just remove these bits like so. Put the Velcro pad on the bottom here and then perhaps stick that somewhere. I've seen people sort of put them on their radios like that. For me, it's not really floated my boat. I just prefer it on the wrist, but there's an option there, especially, I suppose, if you're using it as DVR, then you're always in touch with your goggles, but that's an idea. But you can just put these back on easy enough as well, so. So nice and versatile. Anyway, let's see how it performs out in the field. So I went out flying with a few friends and here's Jinx praying to the FPV gods and also apparently flying. And I just wanted to show that um, despite the, the light, the screen's not bad. You can see it um, with some overhead sunlight. It's not the best view ever, but um, it, it gives me the real easy option to sort of help spot my friend's quads whilst being able to just look at my wrist when I want to actually see what's happening for the FPV point of view as well. So that was quite nice. And this is that same flight recorded on the DVR The Watch. We're just in this corner over here. I think you can just about see us. And uh, Jinx, buddy, we really need to have a chat about your ESCs and the amount of noise they're putting in the picture. So this is quite useful to sort of gauge how well the little watch manages to do in a little bit of range. As you see, we're not too far out here. We're, you know, well within uh, 100 metres. And, as, you know, aside from the fact we're getting some noise off the ESCs, uh, it looks pretty good. But um, let's flick over and fly one of my models, which don't quite do this to the screen. 
So here's me flying a battery on one of my quads. I think this is the um, the Comet, and I this is the watch recording. And what I notice about this is it doesn't particularly like it when I go sort of up quite high. And I suppose I should point out as well that when I'm wearing the watch, it's obviously not in the ideal position. Like the fat shark's on top of my head, so this gets a particularly nice picture because I know where my antennas are the Omni is pointing straight up, the directional is pointing vaguely at it but of course with my watch on the wrist I'm just holding the radio and so the antenna is kind of all over the place and stuff. So although I think this looks really nice, I'm really happy with the recording, I think it is also worth saying that um, purely looking at it from the RF point of view which is looking at its own receiver and how good the signal is, it's not going to be as good as rapid fires and we can check that out by um, looking at the signal side by side because I was also recording on my internal DVD on my fact charts. Well if we look here I'm just going over our heads there and you can just see us down on the left hand side so let's go a little bit of distance out in this field and see what sort of signal we get. As you can see there's a, a couple of little um, bits of static and, and glitchiness that occasionally pops up on the watch. Uh, the DVR with the rapid fires obviously a lot cleaner but to say you know we're going out a reasonable distance here this is a couple of hundred meters um, it's actually looking quite good it seems to be more about the position of the quad versus the position of my arm and, and where the antenna is so coming down low here we get a, a few more uh, bits of statting and stuff but really pretty impressive stuff from this little watch to say what this antenna is it's literally just a piece of wire attached to my wrist so I thought it'd be good to give it a bit more of a torture test so as far as a torture test went what we found coming in the field uh, on this day is they the builders had put up more metal fences and this acted a little bit like we had a Faraday cage to almost try and fly through so this is me getting in behind a fence and not a problem here until we go into the actual what I would call the cage part where you see the watch DVR really break apart where the rapid fire is just not a problem now my next flight what I had intended to do is record using the phono out from the fat sharks into the the watch to show how you could get a good signal from it now originally when I was describing the watch uh, earlier although it happened after this I was saying about make sure you've got that AV in sign what I thought is that I didn't record the AV in and recorded just the normal RF but looking back through the clips I got what I found out is that I didn't record anything at all so I fell into the slight trap about when you press that record button that that first press is just going to bring up the OSD and it's only on the second press it will do something of course if your OSD is already there and you press the button twice as I was just doing because I thought oh it's two presses I didn't think about the OSD you'll just turn it straight back off again so I ended up with no recording um, of that flight showing how uh, you could sort of get around the, the problem with its own RF device by recording via the AV out however then I went home and tried that again so what I've got here is the watch sat on my desk upstairs and it really does not like the multipathing in the house. It it really doesn't like this at all. If you look at the picture we're, we're getting here, it is really quite bad and it's only going to get worse as we go outside. This is from the Ishin Novice One, a review that I put out uh, a few days ago and it's kind of a nice little quad but a really flawed concept with the control and the goggles you get and I'm just going to show I would guess the worst point of this as we go down behind uh, the, the brick wall here down the alley and let's have a look at that now after I've plugged in to my fat sharks and recorded that way this is of course uh, another flight uh, this time and what we're seeing here is essentially the same sort of feed that I would get in my goggles from my uh, rapid fire uh, obviously using the AV out in order to get a decent signal into DVR and actually managed to press the record button this time and I would show what the fat sharks recorded at the same time but it looks exactly the same we're literally just getting a copy of it 
straight into the Isheen watch DVR there. So this is uh, a, a great way of just using it as a DVR. Um, and if you've got an environment like this where multipathing is a problem, this is where that little watch is really going to struggle. But out in a, in a big field, um, you, you'd barely have to think about it. And what I did whilst out in the field is I recorded myself on my Factshock DVRs whilst recording a friend flight with it just on my wrist and that worked absolutely fine. Brilliant if you're going to do some chasing and you want to get both angles and you don't have to rely on someone sending over a DVR file for you. More strangely, I took the watch down my local shopping centre and found there were a few cameras there with 5.8 just unencrypted sat there, I changed a couple of channels around and I managed to find yeah, a couple of little angles. I'll grant you it's quite an elaborate way of trying to get a slightly different camera angle, but here's me and the dog finding ourselves on the camera and giving us a little wave. Hello. I have to say I really quite like this. I, I think it's fair to say though, I don't think it's going to float everybody's boat because some people say, well, what's the point? I've got DVR recording already in my goggles. I don't need to see it on my wrist. For others without a DVR or like me who just want to be able to mix and match when out flying with friends between essentially looking through the goggles albeit a watch and looking up at the the sky to look at the quad it's quite a nice mix and uh, it, it really does outperform the sort of the previous version i had just from the fact it's got race band and low band has got dvr recorder and most importantly you can plug in from your fat shocks so i say from fat shocks if you've got goggles as uh, sort of basic ones which don't have a dvr uh, recorder this is a nice little fit i think and I just noticed whilst having a look around the web, for those people that really wanted to fit it on a radio or something, if you look at Thingiverse, there's loads and loads of different designs. And uh, even on Banggood, there's uh, fairly cheap versions of it for the Tyrannus QX7, X9D and uh, X-Lite, which looks quite good and it's a little bit of a, a sun cover there. Um, I, I still don't see people flying it with the radio and, and looking at this because it's a bit small, but just for just for glancing down and looking, and stuff really good anyway this was kindly supplied for review by banggood thanks to banggood and of course you'll find links down below where you can check this out in the meantime i hope that review has been helpful and i will catch you in the next video bye for now well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel